Good evening again, friends, and welcome to Guidance Through These Evening Prayers for Friday, March 27th, 2020. The opening sentences. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and you may respond, and the day is almost over. God, who said, out of darkness the light shall shine, is the same God who made light shine in our hearts to bring us the knowledge of God's glory shining in the face of Christ. The evening psalm is Psalm 141. I call upon you, I am who I am. Come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, I am who I am. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not turn my heart to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with those who work iniquity. Do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, let the faithful correct me. Never let the oil of the wicked anoint my head, for my prayer is continually against their wicked deeds. When they are given over to those who shall condemn them, then they shall learn that my words were pleasant. Like a rock that one breaks apart and shatters on the land, so shall their bones be strewn at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes are turned toward you. I am who I am, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Do not leave me defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I alone escape. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O God, and let your loving kindness descend upon us, that with purified hearts we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. Our evening reading tonight comes from our Old Testament reading, that is, comes from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 10 to 16. As you listen, I encourage you again to listen for whatever it is that God wants to speak to you. So something will grab you, something will leap out from the text as I read or as you read along. Hold it. Uh, meditate upon it throughout the reading, and then I'll give time after for continued meditation upon whatever it is that God spoke to you. Friends, let us now listen for the word of the Lord. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Well, say to them, as I live, says the Lord, I am who I am. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, mortal, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not save them when they transgress. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, it shall not make them stumble when they turn from their wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by their righteousness when they sin. 
Though I say to the righteous that they shall surely live, yet if they trust in their righteousness and commit iniquity, none of their righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if they turn from their sin and do what is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give back what they have taken by robbery and walk in the statutes of life, committing no iniquity, they shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the sins that they have committed shall be remembered against them. They have done what is lawful and right. They shall surely live. And our New Testament reading today comes again from the book of Revelation, John's Revelation, chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. Again, listen for what God wants to speak to you, what truth God wants to reveal to you today. Hold on to it, meditate upon it as I finish the reading, and I'll give time after the reading for your continued meditation. Revelation 11, 15 to 19. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Then the twenty-four elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, singing, We give you thanks, Lord God Almighty who are and who were, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath has come, and the time for judging the dead, for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and all who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The thing that jumped out to me today in this reading was especially from the Ezekiel reading in chapter 33. Um, it may have sounded a little convoluted, um, uh, and there's reason for that, because uh, there was a lot of language in there about iniquity and sin and turning back and, well, can your righteousness save you? And no, it can't. But if your wickedness and you turn it, and, um, and the reason it's so confusing is because, in my opinion, is because this is, this is exactly an Old Testament prophecy from Ezekiel. This is exactly God trying to communicate to the people of Israel through Ezekiel. This is how God's mercy works. And it's a tricky thing. And wow, it's a little bit, maybe God even realized, wow, it's a little bit more complex than I anticipated. And all of a sudden, we see in the New Testament, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, fulfilling exactly what God has said in this prophecy from the mouth of Ezekiel. Don't depend on your righteousness. Paul echoes that exact sentiment when he says, there's, there, there's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. 
It is a free gift of God. Ephesians. It is a free gift of God. And Jesus himself echoes this Ezekiel statement when he's speaking on various occasions to different religious leaders where he says, don't presume that you can say, well, we have the prophets or we have the law. <laughs> don't presume on your individual righteousness. Don't presume on your uh, collective righteousness that just because of who you are, because of your um, assigned identity that we assign ourselves, that your salvation is assured. Salvation, grace, mercy is a free gift of God. Not of our own work so that no one may boast. So then God turns to the wicked. Well, Surely they shall perish. Ah. Repentance. Repentance is real. Turn back. Turn away. Turn back towards God's justice. Liberty. Grace. Mercy. Compassion. Equity. And as you pursue those things you will be pursuing God and the kind of grace and mercy and compassion that God wants for the world. Even back in Ezekiel, God was formulating because God has always been, God always is, and God always will be. God was still, was, was then formulating this understanding that, hey, you know what? God always knew I'm going to have to do this grace and mercy and redemption thing myself. And so I'm going to take care of it. Don't depend on your righteousness, your perceived righteousness. God even loves the wicked who can repent and turn. And when you who think you are righteous, when I who thinks I am righteous stumbles, Repent. Repent, repent, repent. Grace of God is a free gift, not earned, so that no one may boast. And then we see that culmination in our Revelation passage. The reign of God comes to earth. The nations raged. God came in, calmed the tumult. That's what God has had a history of doing, bringing order to the chaos. So, amen on that. Let us close our time together in prayer. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, O Lord, the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Merciful God, we praise you that you give strength for every weakness, forgiveness for our failures, and new beginnings in Jesus Christ. Especially, we thank you for your great love for the whole world. We thank you for the plants and animals that provide our food. We thank you for those, like doctors and nurses, who support us in times of suffering, and all hospital staff. We thank you for accomplishments that are pleasing to you. We thank you for expressions of love, unexpected or undeserved. Almighty God, you know all needs before we speak our prayers, yet you welcome our concerns for others in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for Baptist, Disciples of Christ, Pentecostal, and Free Churches. Pray for victims of tragedy and disaster. Pray for those who are captive or in prison. Pray for those who weep with the grieving and we pray for reconciliation with our enemies. Protect your people, O God, and keep us safe until the coming of your new dawn and the establishment of your righteous rule. By your Holy Spirit, stir up within us a longing for the light of your new day and guide us by the radiance of Jesus Christ, your Son, 
our risen Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Go in peace.